there's an ancient Catholic chant called the Vini Creator Spiritus, or Come Creator Spirit. And this chant is sung um, in very important times in the church, uh, in the liturgies. So at one point, it's chanted when the cardinals, uh, who are the guys in red, they're entering into the Sistine Chapel to elect the new pope. Vene Creator Spiritus, that is chanted. Or when a bishop is ordained, or a new priest is ordained, and there's the laying on of hands, asking the Holy Spirit to come. Vene Creator Spiritus. Or even during a confirmation, the Vene Creator Spiritus is chanted as each confirmandi is being sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. So Vene Creator Spiritus, come Holy Spirit, come creator spirit and that's what the holy spirit desires to do he the holy spirit consoles us and comforts us and guides us but in a real way the holy spirit wants to renew us on, on a very deep level uh, to transform us ultimately into another christ into a saint the mission of the holy spirit to renew and transform us is clear in john's gospel um, in John's Gospel, we hear uh, the account of Jesus coming in their midst and breathing the Holy Spirit, giving the gift of the Holy Spirit to the apostles. But John has a couple details that I want to point out that recall this idea of the recreation. So it says, on the evening of that first day of the week, that first day of the week. So John is intentionally saying this is the first day of the week recalling the uh, first account of Genesis, the creation account, where there's the account of the seven days of creation. So he's saying this is the first day of the week. This is the new creation. Secondly, John says that Jesus breathed on them and gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit. That again recalls the story in Genesis 2, when God breathes his very life into Adam, the beginning of creation. So again, this whole idea of recreation is the work of the Holy Spirit. And ever since the fall of Adam and Eve, the universe has uh, wanted this recreation. The Holy Spirit has wanted to recreate. Um, Adam and Eve had the gift of the Holy Spirit within them uh, when they were created, as we saw in Genesis 2. Uh, and then by their fall, they lost that spirit. They lost that friendship with God. And ever since then, God has desired to renew uh, humanity, renew creation by his Holy Spirit. And it's at this day, this feast, Pentecost, that he does that, that he gives the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's desire is to renew us and to renew us deeply. But how many of us struggle with a sense of powerlessness that what I struggle with, um, I cannot change. Um, the thoughts that I have, uh, I can't change. The, the feelings that I keep coming across, I can't change. Uh, or maybe there's a sin that's uh, deep within, rooted within, that I cannot change. Or a sin or an addiction that I have that I cannot change. The Holy Spirit has the power to change that. Or how many of us resist change? We kind of like the status quo or to fly under the radar and to kind of give the least effort possible. Um, or how many of us are just too stubborn to change? We, we like how we are, we like how things are. Um, the Holy Spirit wants to change us. And this is the good news, that the Holy Spirit has this power to change. And the Holy Spirit wants us to become saints. The Holy Spirit has the power to change us. And it's actually an act of humility to accept this, that we are powerless. And the real change that we want to effect in ourselves cannot be by our own work. It's only God's work that makes us holy. We can read all the self-help books that we want, but they don't have the power to change us. We could also read, or we could also work harder, faster, stronger, longer, 
By our own strength, we don't have that power to affect that deep change within us. It's only in this humble acceptance that we need God, that he alone has the power to really change us, that will bring about the real change. The Holy Spirit wants to form us into saints. So if we resist the change of the Holy Spirit that he wants to do in us, we will never become who we're called to be. We'll never become saints. And so in order to grow in the spiritual life, we must ask for this change. We must humbly trust that God is good and that the change that he wants for us is for our good, that it's a good change. We must not be afraid of this change. Um, I think many of us think that if we're called to be a holy person, we are just going to be boxed into this category of weird people that you can't really relate to because they're holier than that. But actually, in growing in holiness, we become the person who we're called to be. We become more ourselves because it's God who is with us. That was the original plan, that God is forming us into who he wants us to be. So how do we receive this Holy Spirit? The invitation is simple. We must invite him in. God is uh, not going to force anything upon us. He loves us and he wants our freedom. And so it's up to us to invite the Holy Spirit into our lives if we want that change. Come, Holy Spirit. And be assured, uh, we've received the gift of the Holy Spirit at baptism, when through the washing of the water, our original sin was washed away, and the Holy Spirit came again to live in us. Also at our confirmation, we were sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit that gave us real strength and real courage to protect our faith and to spread our faith to others. So we have the Holy Spirit. And so I ask you, where are you, where are you willing to admit your weakness? Where is the Lord inviting you um, in your powerlessness to offer yourself to him and your weakness? He wants to be that power. Invite the Holy Spirit. Where is the Lord inviting you to change? He wants to be that power that will affect the change in you and to transform you to the saint he's calling you to be. Veni creatur spiritus. Come, Holy Spirit.